This is the campground of a nomadic farmer. We saw him down in Florida, 1600 miles away. Now we're in Maine, gonna see what he's up to. Very exciting day on the tour. Do you guys remember Jim, the Florida gardener? The guy who was doing market garden on borrowed land, on borrowed yards? Here's the main man, what's your name? Jim Kovaleski. And what are you doing? I'm packing for my local health food stores. Got an order going this morning. Okay. Yeah, he had some of the most beautiful gardens I had ever seen. He's a nomadic farmer. He was 1,600 miles away down in Florida. Now he's in Maine. Now we're here and we're gonna see what he's up to. Welcome to Lamb Bull Farm. Yes, thank you. Thank you, how you doing buddy? Good, how are you? Good, good. Hanging in there, guys. Yeah. Yeah, you got a busy life. We're a long way. Yeah. We're 1,200 from North Carolina, so. Yeah, how I mean, far I are we a, from Florida? You know, it's about 1,800 the way I go. You know, <laughs> I went up Joe Salatin's River yeah. Valley there. Um, yeah, we're feeling like we're far from home now. Well, you know what's right over there? Yeah. What? Across the water is Canada. I know, isn't that crazy? <laughs> Everything you see here that's in grass, or it's more like meadow, but most people, traditionally a lawn, is mowed with a scythe. Okay. okay, so there's probably about two acres of mixed area here that I mow with a scythe, and I'm mowing five times a year here because I want it to be a little more attractive for, you know, um, being more of a lawn. And think about this, for eight years I've mown this four times a year, five times a year, and taken every bit of grass off it. So I ran down the pasture, right? Yeah. Does it look like it? Wow. I mean, look at the lushness of it. Right. So I think I'm mimicking a rotational grazing idea with the side. Because as you cut that, yeah. right, the grass or the roots decay in the soil if I let it flush up again. You know, get to the, um, the teenage grass like Salatin talks about, right? Yeah. Uh, and so if I can keep it at that stage, I'm doing what the herd does and then I'm feeding the yeah. grass to the micro herd. So why not a lawnmower? You know, I, Pete was in lawn care, I was in lawn care. I fell in love with this tool. This is the best cool. harvesting tool I've ever used. Imagine a tool. If, I, if you told somebody that I had this tool that'll mow a, a 10 foot swath, right? Rake and cut at the same time. Put it all in a windrow that I can pick up. All running on breakfast, essentially, the machine. There's no, <laughs> uh, there's no mechanic, it runs on oatmeal. You know, I'm old about, you know, it is pretty cool and it's something I don't have to reinvent. I saw a Coleman yeah. video last night, that's why I didn't see you, and he was talking about there's nothing new in agriculture. You yeah. gotta go back. Sure. And so we're talking back to the future here. Yeah. I think this is a potential for being the new small scale um, organic agriculture because this is grow, um, farm grown fertility. Can you give us a demonstration of scythe later? Yeah, yeah, I got it all set okay, up cool, up there. Yeah, cool. yeah. We'd love to see that. It also keeps you nice and thin. I mean, you're one of the fittest guys I've ever seen. It is, so. but you know, so I'm on Route 1 out here. That's what you guys came in on, yeah. right? And I've got the field, North Field out there. And I'm mowing there every morning, right? And people are kind of looking at me funny, but they're jogging by. <laughs> Think about this. <laughs> yeah. And there, that's admirable. The guy it that's is. training it for is. the marathon. It's admirable, right? But yeah. they think I'm stupid. And they're not really getting anything Nothing done. Nothing done. You're getting exercise and, and something done. And getting something done. <laughs> and I get a meditative time. So all time. we gotta do, we need to have some sort of a scythe event. Jim. Well, they have you them, need believe to turn it or not. Some sort of competition. There is tournament. <laughs> there's in Nova Scotia. There is. Okay. Hey, there's Big Red. This is what you drove all the way up here. Yeah, that's from all Florida right. In. Is it still set up as your RV or what? Nope. She's already came down. So these sides flip up, okay. right? And I had a red tarp over the top. Had yeah. all my gear in it. And I slept in the back all the way down for four days, or all the way up. And then I converted it to a hay wagon yesterday. Now it's full of. What you got in it? Last year's hay. Now my haystacks, I'm learning, the Europeans got it figured out that when you bust into them, it's like green hay after a, so this was uncovered in the field, so you didn't, you don't even need a barn. This is again, old technology. So could you I, have used this on livestock? You know, the first year I did it when I um, covered just a little bit of the top, because I'm not good at making it, because if you do it right, it's thatched. 
Okay. You know, okay. so it's like a thatched roof. But okay. you know, the Europeans know how to do that. I didn't. So the one year I did cover it, just a bit. You broke into it, and there was still purple vetch flowers in it. Nice. So it would have been quality. I've got a friend in um, Newport that's feeding four acres to his ox. Okay. He's putting, yeah, so it can be done. Nice. And then, so right now I'm mulching some of my areas that are a little bare. So this one, I mulch really thick before I left. So that's really weed free. But that down there, that you'll see the weed. Well, we can go look at it. Um, this whole area looked like that. Whoa. The woods had come in. Because okay. you know, Dad had been gone for seven years, right? And this is the this is the extreme look. So see the the thick woods down there behind that apple tree? Yeah. Two years ago, I it was right to here, just like that. Wow. Right? See, here's the old stump still. So how'd you get it up? Hand power agriculture. It took okay. me about 12 hours with a a hatchet oh. and a handsaw, right? Okay. I, yeah. I like keeping fertility where it was grown. So. When you cut those off, all the root mass is in the ground, right? Yeah. Okay, so there, and it's cut off. Anything that's gonna sprout, if I cut it off at the ground, I can mow with a scythe, just like a chop and drop, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So anything that kept sprouting, this is only two years from the woods. And look at how clean it is. So cool. And then look at where the debris is, or so-called debris. See it back there? Yeah. yeah. You know, I call that a hugel light. Okay. Um, Jack, I actually, Jack Cortez called it a hugel light. I've learned that if you plant berries, you know, any kind of um, cane crop, they like to be tucked up into that. So I planted over there, I've got some that I did like five years ago, and they'll actually creep underneath that and come up. Oh. So I never had to chip it, do nothing. I just moved it into a windrow, and then started planting this. And this is very similar to what the Native Americans did. You know, the New World crops with the squash after they burn, slash and burn, right? Mm -hmm. So I put some uh, New World crop squash, and I had some great yields in here. There is a limiting factor of how the trees are here, so it's a little, when they leaf out the morning sun, I don't get. So it limited production, but you know, that first year I probably got, um, I don't know, maybe eight, 900,000 pounds of squash out of here. Nice. Plus some annual vegetables. But see where the soil life has eaten all the mulch I put down in the fall? Yes. I didn't do it as thick, so now I'm remulching. Ah. And right now, between what's in the truck and what's there is an acre of grass mown out there. Okay. So the idea is fertility concentration. Think about that. I took an acre of grass and put it into something that's more like, what, 2,000 square feet. Okay. So that would be similar to like many years out in the field of dying back, right? All right. So you've increased fertility here big time. So that's, that's what I'm watching and having great yields. Is that mound retaining some of the moisture too? You know, I don't think so. Okay. You know, I did a lot with hugel cultures. Yeah. And I think they're highly overrated for what people want to get out of them. Okay. Um, I did one over there that was like, that's probably seven years ago. Okay. Some of the wood has not even rotted yet. Okay, so that's basically for growing your, uh, looks like you got, what, raspberries that's, in them or something? That's two-year-old raspberries, okay. right? Which is a high-value crop here. Okay. And then I, what I did is, what happens okay. is, They'll suck her out. Come down and look at this. That's a Baldwin apple tree that her dad planted. Okay. A beautiful keeper apple. Um, but so, the original stuff I bought from Fedco, right? Yeah. It's a variety called Killarney, right? You can see it's bigger canes there, but the first year it came out. Look at how far they're already out. Wow. Okay, and now all I got to do is do that and I can spread them you know because I paid 35 bucks for five plants right <laughs> yeah you know yeah. but think about again compound interest yeah I've got about you know 50 plants here now that mm -hmm. I am selling oh. and I'm also moving to other areas of the farm I'm yeah. growing seven varieties now here so you're taking advantage of those being Viral. Prolific. They're yeah. taking off. They're prolific. Others would consider that a problem. You're harvesting it and selling them. The problem's the solution. That's yeah. one of those permaculture things. You know, I'm not a big permaculture practitioner, but some of the things they talk about are so valuable. Yeah. The idea of composition instead of imposition. If you compose a system working with nature, you don't have to work as hard. Yeah. Let me get this right. All you did was Here's take what you chopped up right here and you piled it up in a mound. You didn't worry about how it was on the contour. You didn't, you just, you just put it right here to create a garden, huge garden bed. And all you did was plant some raspberries. Yep. Five raspberries. Yep, five here and now they've, last year I moved them. You know, I, I, You've moved some up. So this is the second year. So the first year they even okay. suckered. 
and then I move them up there, and now I'm going to have to sell a bunch of these, otherwise this is going to turn into a bramble. What do you mean sucker? To produce fruit? Sucker means that's what these are. People call these suckers. Oh, okay. I mean, I might not so have the nomenclature right, but that's what I call it. Did sucker. it produce fruit that first year? Yep, very, not a lot, but they're okay. just starting to, this is a mid-season. this so is going to be a huge crop this year. Yeah. Okay. You know, and I'm selling them for, um, I think I'm getting three bucks a half pint. And you didn't do anything after you planted, no. except for mulch. But think about where raspberries grow. Yeah. They grow in the wood's edge. Okay. Okay, so instead uh, of trying to put them out in the field and bring your uh, mycorrhiza chips out there, plant them where the woods were. Yeah. Right? Because I chopped this back. This is a mycorrhizal system. You're a permaculturalist at heart, you know. Well, I mean, it all <laughs> goes together. At nature it's just nature just what it nature. does, <laughs> right? Um, and yeah, and her dad had planted. There's, um, I don't know if you can see up there, they are um, hazelnuts. Yeah. There's cool. stuff in here that he planted. Those are all um, pear yeah. trees behind you. And when you say dad, you're talking about another, you're not related to them. It's not your dad. No. It's a lady that you've known. Bob you've, Johnson. You've asked her. If you you kind of saw this as an abandoned land, exactly. You, but they still own it. They still had a love for it. And you said, "Hey, can I cultivate it?" And they said, "Cool." Yeah, and they said, "Have at it." I said, "Can I camp out on the ocean and beat back the woods, <laughs> right, yeah. and keep what I grow?" Okay. And, it, and what the thing is, the abundance that happens. At first, I think she was a little saw how much was coming out of here that she was feeling, oh, maybe this ain't a good deal for me. But there's so much abundance now. She's getting all this stuff from this land that oh, I can't cool. sell. Okay. You know, and then the land's being taken care of. Good. It's in much better condition than when I got here. Because cool. think about that compared to that or that. Wow. You said camp out. You're like camping out here in a tent. Come on, a bunch cool. of them. Okay, it's a great show place us your place. to live. Okay. This is home for eight years. <laughs> Wonderful home. I bet it's paid for, Jim. Yeah, well, it's yeah. That's the thing. Yep, that How much paid you for. On it? <laughs> Nothing. That I think I bought a new tent last year that was six hundred bucks. What? Paid cash. What's your mortgage? What's the mortgage rate on six hundred dollars? <laughs> no, well, I paid cash from the, what the land produced. Good for you, buddy. And then here's kitchen. Okay. So I learned. So I'm a market gardener, right? So I've yeah. got a market. These easy ups are crazy. So I buy a new easy up every year for market, <laughs> and then retire the other one to be my kitchen. Check it out. It's like being a Boy Scout. Yeah. All summer. Great America Farm Tour Cribs, here we are. He's a Boy Scout all summer. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but this is a... all you need, I mean. I, yeah, I mean. What do you need? I mean, you're a single guy. I call water from the farmhouse, drinking water, and there's a little seasonal creek that right now is running, so I can, you know, I do my dishwater on the fire, so I can right. use that for dishwater. And what a view, what river is this? This is actually the mouth of the St. Croix River, which dumps into Cobscook Bay. Okay. Canada is right across. I watch the sunrise over Canada every nice. morning. Wow. And it so right, you realize beautiful. how early it's rising here? It's what, 4.45? Right now, and so we still got another month. So I about know. four o'clock, it'll rise there. So you can't really... It's on the longest day? <laughs> yeah. So you see this, that's the mountain over there, that double one? Yeah. That's called Cham's Cook. And over the summer, I get to watch, when I get here, it's like on the southern shoulder of that one. Uh -huh. And then every day it goes all the way up to the notch, and then it starts going back south. And I get the, it's really a good, you know, calendar for how the season progresses here. Living room. So I Kitchen. Bed. I don't sleep on bedroom. The oh. Sleep on the ground. Okay. Right bed in here, so I haul all <laughs> nice. this down. And I kind of live out of these bins because they can seal up and carry around. That's true. What about nor'easters, man? What about a summer storm? You know, this one's held up really good and the easy up. Uh, it's okay. went through two different ones. The true, one of the hurricanes came over, it was coming out of the south, so this is protected from that. Yeah. But the nor'easters, you just hunker down. Um, there's some bad weather in Maine. The first year I camped here, 2009, it rained every day in June. Every day. There were slugs everywhere. Um, but that's farming. Is this you know? completely waterproof? It is, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah, the canvas, old canvas tents are good. This is out of Alaska. I think it's Alaska nice. tent and tarp. And there's your, what's that for then? So that's the guest tent. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you would have you come got... by yourself, I don't think you'd get your whole family okay. in there, but. Um, you got any guests right now? I don't, and you know, uh, you know, over the years, maybe in 10 ye or nine years I've been here, I've had six or seven guests. Okay. But, you know, it's kind of cool when somebody shows up and they yeah. get to help out and um, see what's going on here. I got a friend, Ian, who's actually gonna take the bus up and he's gonna come visit me from Florida. Okay, nice. I don't water. I haven't watered in seven years here, including transplant day. 
I don't weed if I keep the grass on the beds, you know, don't let the soil life eat it mm -hmm. all, and um, I don't fertilize. All because of a handheld scythe. Right. Let's, uh, let's show the processes. You cut it, and then you put it in your truck and haul it, and then you put it on this. So we'll do this later. Okay. We'll come back with the kids. You've got a load. We'll dump it on here as mulch. But let's go see what it would look like to cut it. So this is my um, technology for the farming I do. This is what I need. <laughs> I, I need a tarp. Uh, technology I need here. A hay fork. Well, hay fork is different. It's only got three times. It's like a manure fork. Yeah. And I need a scythe. So how much? How much does that set you back? <laughs> oh, it must be. You know, probably. Well, you know, believe it or not, these are all antique store okay. finds. The nice. Hay, the hay rake too. So I mean, you're probably looking at a hundred bucks. Okay. The size cost you two hundred. Nice. Can you smell the chlorophyll? Oh wow! Yeah. Now it's getting dull. I, I felt the drag. It's starting. I yeah. was having effort. Is that right? because you hit the ground a little bit? Because the mound could be a it's little uneven. So then you go ahead and. Well, no, what you. I mean, I wear the gloves. So what I'll do is when it's wet, because you got to wipe the grass off. Oh, okay. But traditionally, it's a. You do this to wipe it, but I got sick. I mean, I mow so much. How many bends would that be over the day? Because it's probably true. every five minutes. So I just wipe it with my hand, and I've never cut myself. Knock on wood. Okay, my turn, Jim. Okay. Nice. Watch it. Yeah. And it's all about how far the step. Yesterday, I thought these were his onions that he brought up from Florida. His onions are still in the barn, not ready to plant yet. This is garlic. This garlic. is what you did when you left here. You planted garlic. So last thing I do, like I uh, leave here usually maybe 3rd or 4th of October. So the last two days I'm planting 1800 garlic. Okay, uh, and then you come back and you have a produce to sell. Well, so this is actually a crop that I'll uh, pull in probably the end of July. I'll cure it in the barn and then take it to Florida. And then I planted like 1800 of them and that could turn into like four grand for me down in Florida. Nice. Um, and Did you people bring anything love it. up from Florida that gives you a quick cash crop? No, what I've done well, so I, because I brought so many of those onions, I probably grew about 10,000 of those onions. So I've already sold probably, I don't know, maybe 2,000. Okay, I good. I made a couple hundred bucks. You know, my cool. farmer friends are happy to have them. Okay, cool. So old Red's a dump truck too. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> That's a good truck. It's a great truck. I just got this hydraulic cylinder rebuilt. It's, it's, the reservoir is in, integrated and it's a 20 ton dump, so I could dump, you know, 40,000 pounds with it. I couldn't Good. carry it, but. So this is an old landscape um, way. We used to move, move a lot of brush and leaves. So you just take a tarp, which weighs ounces. See, it's a kind of a bummer when it's really windy. You see this? Guys, you can help him. You can grab it by hand and put it on his cart. This is a little moldier than I'd had in the past because I didn't do well in the stacking, but still, you know, it's it's preserved over the winter without a barn. Good job, Lily. And when you were asking about um, well, how I'd rather use the hay that's cut, the thing about um, moving stuff is when it's green, it weighs more, right? So if I got good drying weather for me, like haymaking weather, I'll let yep. it dry out there because it's okay. easier to move. So somebody grab here. Right there. Right okay, here. I'll do it. Okay. Got it? Now we're going to pull this way. So you guys are not really helping. We don't got to hold it because all the weight's on the ground. Yeah. yeah. So even rough ground, you can go over stuff without having it, um, you know, like wheels bouncing around or anything. <laughs> uh oh, man down. Man down. Come on. Hey. <coughs> Be careful with that with your brother's hands in there. Doing it really thick, like I said, when I smothered the inside the chicken barn, the witchcraft. What I'll do then is I'll pull the tarp up, full load, oops, full load, and then all I'll do is that. And then it dumps and it's pretty thick and that's enough to smother stuff. So last year at this time, um, the grass was right here, right? Okay, and my big problem, you can see it right now, what happens is the weeds start coming from the outside of the bed, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm looking, what happens here usually is the dandelions show up, which is a quick growing big leaf plant, right? They fill that void. And I went, what else will do that? Potatoes. Nice. Okay, and I learned from Mark that potatoes, Mark Fulford, he's like one of my big time mentors. He's a soil scientist out of 
um, and romaine and he also grows amazing organic apples. But he said potatoes like new ground. Even the Swedish will actually plant it right in the sod. They just wow. take a, 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 a mattock, make a hole and stuff the potato in. So I kind of modified that. So what I'll do this year is put it right here on the grass edge, right? So I'll make a divot, plant the potato there. Potato will come up. The first mowing, I'll mulch it, oh. right? Because it delivers that windrow right to the potato. Mm. Potato grows up. It's keeping the weeds because it's shading them out, right? And next thing you know, I've got a wider bed, right? Nice. And it kept the weeds from going in. Nice. And I'm starting to call it, I think I'm going to call it pioneering, because it's pioneering land, pioneering perimeter potatoes. <laughs> I like it. He's chopped the bark off of that. I said, what are you doing? He's killing it and turning this into a trellis for hops. Man, Jim's just full of ideas here. And this is a killer apple. It's called Hudson's Golden Gem. I, I got them about five years ago from Mark Fulford. It's this beautiful, big, russet apple that's so crisp and yellow fleshed. Um, they're huge, and so I got one of these, two of them from Fedco, so I got that going. Do you prune or maintain these apple trees in any way? A little. Ellen's more the apple trees that were here from her okay. dad. She prunes them. The pears have been incredible once I started getting. So think about, now you've got trees in the middle of these lush gardens with the microherd really happy manure. These are having incredible crops of pears now. Nice. Because that's what the blossoms are you're seeing is pear blossoms. Thank you, Jim, for showing us around. It was so cool to follow the loop, see you in Florida, see you in Maine. Thank you for all that you're doing. Yeah, I can't believe you guys made it. I'm, you know, most people <laughs> say they'll visit and they don't, so yeah. you did. That's awesome. Here we are. How many miles is this from Eight. here to your home in Florida? About 1,800. <laughs> and I think it's, I think it's um, 22 degrees in latitude. Okay. We're back at the bus. Isn't Jim great? Loaded vlog, full of info, but still. I created even more extras, if you will. I asked a bunch of people in the membership area, what are some questions you might have for Jim? They asked great questions like, how do you get started quickly? How do you get a market quickly? Do you do any kind of special amendments? If you guys are interested in that extra stuff, it's in my new membership area. Check it out, I'll leave the info for it in the description. It's up for a limited time, so do check it out and see what it's all about. Get that extra stuff of Jim if you're interested.